What do you think you find? <laughs> my LinkedIn profile. My LinkedIn profile. All right. So um, uh, who's on LinkedIn? <clears throat> Raise your hand. Raise it high. Now, who's not on LinkedIn? That, that says a lot, doesn't it? Half the U.S. is on LinkedIn. Now, when you think about, you know, their children being born every day, okay, that, that's quite a figure, don't you think? You know, probably a higher, a higher um, saturation with Facebook. It's, it's just bigger. It's part of our everyday life. But the, for, if you're a business person, that's it. So how does this sound? Does this sound like you at all? Somebody you know? Used to be me. Oh, it's totally me. Okay. Um, don't feel bad because even folks who do LinkedIn all day long, every day, feel this way still. It's hard. It's become so much. It didn't start out that way, but it's this sort of way now. You're kind of like, oh my God, what do I got all this stuff to do? And I'm just talking about LinkedIn. What if you have to add in all the other social media stuff on top of it? Do you see where a social media expert or strategist or something comes into play? Well, you're in the right spot. You really are. You're going to walk away with solutions here today. So um, I was not always an engineer that I am now. Okay. I started out with Highlights magazines trying to find the hidden pictures, and then it was popular science and popular mechanics and that stuff. I kind of got started a little early on it. Um, I had my day. Um, I dated a hairdresser for a few years in the early Fleetwood Mac days. You can't see it quite as much, but it's actually quite a, quite a convenience there. Someone pointed out that to me a long, long, long time ago. Um, I, I've sort of always been an engineer. Okay, I kind of started early, you know, with Hot Wheels. All right, all right, guys, Hot Wheels. You, you know them, right? I got some of my high school buddies here, you know, oh yeah, our Hot Wheels became 327 Chevys, you know. Not just that, a 289, a 302, was it? 289. 289, there we go. Tim, I don't know, what did you drive back then? My mom's Monte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> Tim didn't stick out no. at school like some of us did. I'll bet you didn't get cuffed in the parking lot for burning your tires up, did you? I did not. Okay. You know, somebody did. Somebody did. Um, been on LinkedIn a long time. Okay, so LinkedIn came along in, in 2003, and by 2000, uh, by, in 2003, by 2004, I'm already showing people how to use it. Okay, so they pay me 500 bucks for an afternoon. We build a profile together, a little bit of search. There's only five settings at that time on LinkedIn. It was a pretty easy afternoon, all right? Recruiters were the big folks at that time. They knew it, they knew it, right? Um, along the way, I got to meet Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn. So the, the Reed Hoffman himself, well, he's, he's beautiful, beautiful, yeah. So Reed Hoffman and I, 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 well, my favorite story to tell, you gotta tell a story if you're a speaker, right? You gotta start with a story. So here's my big story. Let's see how I do, Annie, okay? <laughs> So I'm, I'm, right, I'm right next to him. We both got our laptops there. We're on Wi-Fi. We're on a, we're on a hot spot. Okay, remember those little pucks? You got a little hot spot. You know, it was 12 years ago. And I invite him to connect on LinkedIn, and he goes, Mike, I, I can't connect with you. I can't. And I'm, I'm going like, I'm, I'm, I know I'm small. I am a little peon, little guy. And he's the most important investor in all of the Bay Area. This is the founder of LinkedIn. He founder of PayPal. Okay, I mean, big, big money stuff, billions. And, and it was a trending thing at the time, and Connie will like this, trending thing at the time was in our last name, we would put our email address in with our last name. So my official email address was, was part of my last name, O'Neill space M O'Neill at integratedalliances.com. And it violates a rule. It's a, you know, don't, don't, don't do that, you know. And I had to make a choice. Do I fix it and connect to Reed Hoffman, this guy who was, he wasn't that big then. I mean, he's big, but he wasn't like, you know, I mean, you know, super T. Boone Pickens big, you know, kind of big guy. Or do I keep it the way it is and stay with my cool little last name? And I made the wrong choice and I'm not connected. <laughs> to the most important person in the world and all I had to do. Now you couldn't change it back or my life could be really bad. You know, the guy, main guy at LinkedIn could do some really bad stuff to you. So I made a bad choice, okay? Um, so along the way though, um, you know, that's 2007, 2008, we're doing all kinds of stuff here. Workshops and webinars, 201s, 301s, all kinds of stuff. 
And then 208, 2008 kind of had a little trouble, didn't it? Remember? Well, where were you sitting in 2008? Not in a good spot, maybe. Maybe you were in a good spot. You weren't in telecom then. We caught that one, right? We caught that one earlier. 9-11 caught us in telecom. So um, along the way, I kind of got, the, I got the, the, the buzz to be part of LinkedIn. I bought a PC in the early days, got LinkedIn in the later days. It just sort of came for me, working on the third book in the series right now. So you've got a handout. And I'm going to be talking to you about how to do some really sophisticated things with regard to targeting and, and, and engaging people and stuff. So this is sort of your blueprint. We call it the time system. A time stands for something. So I'm not going to make a case that you understand why LinkedIn is so important. Okay, I'm not going to. Okay. And I'm giving you tips along the way here in the form of little stars that tell you when something's really important. Okay. Some things are more important than others. Some of it's colorful stuff, like my story with Reid Hoffman was colorful. If it's got a star, it's not. And let's start with this. Okay. LinkedIn is very trusted, especially compared to <laughs> the others. <laughs> How much do we trust the others, right? How much? How much? Well, LinkedIn's in its own sort of category in this environment. The category LinkedIn's in is more of this data side, the left brain thinking, the system side sort of stuff, right? I'm an engineer. This is me. See why I'm on this side? Here's Janet with her cold shoulders. <laughs> or is she? Cold shoulders again. She's always got something new going on, right? Always new going on. This is about what's going on now. I'm wearing gray cold shoulders today. I'm wearing pink cold shoulders today. Look at me with my girlfriends. Look at me with my girlfriends, okay? And, and, and that drives certain kinds of businesses, especially the business to consumer businesses. Just love this stuff. Look at the stuff that I buy for me. People don't show off the stuff they buy for their company as much. Look at this software system we bought for our ERP system. Let's brag about it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but would you brag about that on LinkedIn, maybe? We just implemented a SaaS system for 1,100 people and got it done in 30 days and stuff. People on Instagram don't care about that. But people in this world do. So Janet, take a look here. I put this in for you. Companies have values, right? I don't know what Facebook's worth now. Hundred billions of dollars. Hundreds of billions. They may be the first company to be worth a trillion dollars. Somebody's Amazon probably be number one to be worth a trillion dollars. But they're in that bucket. Okay, they're in that bucket. Yeah. Twenty-six billion dollars for LinkedIn. You know? Well, LinkedIn's already making money. Instagram wasn't, okay? You see the difference between a company that's making money in the, in the black, prospects, it's prospects. LinkedIn and Google have a very special relationship. Very, very special relationship. Put anybody's name in at the top in Google and see whose LinkedIn profile appears for that person. It's the number one slot for just about any name you can come up with. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt his profile shows up, number one on LinkedIn. And the second one is other people with that name. You know, trust, trust, verifiable, social proof, they call it, that sort of stuff. So it's, it's B2B stuff, though. That's really what we're talking about here. B2B, business to business, people who buy products for their business, not for their own self. They're buying things that are going to be incorporated in other things. They're buying ingredients as part of a bigger picture. And you can make yourself look this big if you're even just really one person. I'll show you how that happens here. This, how, this is part of the, there'll be a star by this one here. All right. In a lot of cases, the biggest value in LinkedIn is the data that's there. Have you gone to Facebook to try to find someone's data about them on Facebook? Let's find a phone number. Let's see where they went to school. Let's find out about their current job title. Okay, it's just not there. But it's all over here and it's free. <coughs> free, 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 free. Okay, now, 
There's tools to extract that data, and I'm going to make the big case for you that you should spend 80 bucks a month. Watch, it's coming up. Coming up. Okay. So the thing we're talking about is the basic LinkedIn, and LinkedIn has its own app that goes with it, the LinkedIn, LinkedIn app on your phone. Okay. Great app, by the way. You will use the LinkedIn mobile app. Okay. Sales Navigator goes with it. It's a companion product. It's a separate product. Word and Excel look a little bit alike. Do some of the same things. Different products. And LinkedIn is like Word and Sales Navigator is like Excel. Not everyone needs Excel, but everyone needs a word processor. Everyone has LinkedIn. So let's talk about what, what makes this up. By the way, there's other versions. And there will be even more versions coming in the future, perhaps. Other versions. This is now part of Microsoft here. You can expect there'll be a version for just about anyone. How old do you think you need to be to be on LinkedIn? What's the legal limit? Legal start. 18, 18 over here. Anyone else? 16. 16 over here. Anyone else? No age limit. That, that's the better one. None of the above. Right? That's good. That's really good. Anyone else? I have not heard it yet. 13 is what I said. 13 is not it. It's an even number, but you're close. 14. 14. <laughs> so I don't think you need to worry about 14-year-olds of the world tracking you down doing things. The only 14-year-olds who care about LinkedIn are entrepreneurs whose dad has got a lot of money, who's about to start a business, who needs all the services we provide, perhaps. All right? So let's talk about when to use each, okay? I'm going to pin it down to these these two here, okay, these two right here. All right. When to use each. Everyone needs LinkedIn. LinkedIn is for everyone. That's where you create stuff. That's where we put stuff in, we write, we, we, we make things happen here for everybody. Okay. Sales Navigator is very specific to a certain audience of people. People who like these terms like leads and accounts, they love those words. Oh, I love leads. Where are my leads? You go on LinkedIn, you go, where are my leads? The word doesn't exist anywhere out there. Good luck. We're going up all down the menus everywhere looking for leads. Where are they? They're in searches maybe, but there's nothing called a lead in LinkedIn. But Sales Navigator is full of accounts. Now, an account is a company and people are leads. Okay, important thing to think about. An account, and in Sales Navigator, we save an account. We're going to talk about account-based targeting here in a little bit. Okay, I don't want to spoil your thunder. So here we talk now about, well, does everyone need to be on LinkedIn? Uh, if you go to Great Clips, do you think they all need to be on LinkedIn? Maybe they are to get their next job or gig or something, right? But not for their great clips business, right? People aren't finding me on LinkedIn and coming into my haircutting thing, right? If it was a lawn mowing business, right? I mean, the lawn mowing people, they're out there mowing the lawns. They don't need to be involved. But the executive team does, okay? Got a lead from the top. And I said, that looks like a young... Kevin Grass or young Ken Rung, Ken Rung, Tim Rung at chair. Look, I mean, I look at my old high school buddies and I remember them the way they were. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's right, Tim. Still remember you basketball back back then. You know, let's go, guys. It's really fun having your high school friends here. You know, they've been know me for 50 years. Some of them. Okay. Next, your marketing folks. They know this, right? Marketing folks know all about this. There are special things that they buy, things, things, that, things that they implement. They have all kinds of things. The market, there's all kinds of money to be spent on marketing on LinkedIn. The sales team, they know about this. They know they should. But in a lot of cases, the sales team, they'll do anything for a deal, won't they? Anything. Um, in, in, in a lot of cases, though, what happens is they're on their own. The company hasn't done anything to make sure they all got the skill set. Everyone can write can do Morse code so we can talk to one another. You know, we have a common platform. That doesn't happen much. That's what I do. So I come into a company where people have got different varying skill sets. We run an assessment across them to find out who knows what and who doesn't know what, to know when to start. And then we kind of stack them up so they, all, they can all look good in pink. Right? Um, recruiting team knows it. They've got a $500 a month version for them, 500 bucks a month that they pay, LinkedIn Recruiter. Cheap version, 125, all right? But this is most of us, right? Isn't that right? This is mostly what we're dealing with. You know, I didn't hear anyone here at CenturyLink in the audience here. 
You know, no one's here from Ogilvy Marketing. You know, this kind of stuff. It's geared for you. Okay, that's what this is geared for. So the different kinds of motivations that people have, in a lot of cases, people want to be found. I'm on LinkedIn, so people will find me. Stuff comes to me. It's inbound stuff. And if you're a job seeker, you like this. Hey, I found you on LinkedIn. You want to work for me. Recruiters take advantage of this. They like this. I'm out there. I got a great looking profile to be discovered. And look what happens to me. I get hired. If you're a 30-year-old programmer, do you know how good life is right now? Do you know what it's like to be 30 and be able to, to, to work in agile, axle, icky, wicky, wacky, woo, latest protocol stuff? You bring your dog to work? <laughs> Have you seen these places? My God, I want to be 25 again. This is like so freaking cool. Go to Denver and see how cool it is, right, Deb? See, go to Denver. All right. Um, but on the other side, if you want to be in control, you've got to be doing outbound things. When stuff is coming at you, you get every little which way. You can't keep track. The, the first one is dogs, the next one's cats, the next one is lizards. You just can't keep track of it all. You can't learn your best practices and apply them and apply them and apply them because they're going this way and this way and this way and this way. When you go outbound, you get to be in control. Okay? Everyone can benefit, but when you're outbound, you're in control. You get to pick your customers. All right. A few things we need. A few things we need. First of all, it's going to take a little bit of time. Okay? Hopefully, you're already spending time on LinkedIn, so you're just reallocating that time a little differently. I'm going to, instead of doing that, I'm going to do this. And I'll help you allocate some of that time to prioritize your time today. Okay? Get knowledge is what we're here about, the things you're going to learn today on this little sheet here. This is knowledge in a one pager right there. It's by 30 hours worth of work going in to make that one pager. Easy to make it a 10 pager, right? Make it a one pager, another story, all right? To get going effectively on LinkedIn, you need 500 plus connections. You need to be able to say, I graduated high school. You need to say you got a college degree, something, all right? And there's a shortcut. It doesn't matter how you get there. I didn't say 500 good ones. <laughs> I didn't, really, and I didn't mean to say it if you, if you thought that. The good ones come at 501, okay? 501, <laughs> I see that. You can kick, kick them, go ahead, it's okay. There, there you go. They can't work for me until he's got at least 501. That's right, yeah. can't, can't talk smack. <laughs> and, and most people can't see how, far, how much further past 500 you are. I can usually tell. Jess and I know where to look. We just, a certain spot you can go look. All right, but in most cases, you'd have no idea. Here's your quick way to get there. Notice there's a star, okay? So if you want it. I thought it meant you were a lion. Thank you for this. It's been bugging me on LinkedIn. I thought it meant you were part of the lion's organization. Um, there, there's, there's an official LinkedIn lion list. It goes back to 2006, and I was on it. How do you think I got to 30,000 connections? Mm -hmm. Right? People invited me. You can only send so many. There's a limit. It used to be 3,000, now it's 5,000 messages, uh, um, connection requests you can send. How do you get to 30? Do the math, right? Okay. And I've deleted, deleted over 15,000 people from my network just so I can keep going. So they just keep getting better and better and better. All right. <laughs> but this is the way to do it. Quote, LinkedIn open networker, end quote, United States. If you want to just say Minnesota, you can do it in Minnesota. And just, you're just trying to fill a full of people that are as close to you geographically as possible. So it's better to do it by state, pick the five state region or so. Because they're going to have more people in their network proportionally that are local and stuff. Once you get to 500 plus, you can stop. In fact, you can even withdraw these ones that you have out there. We did that, Jess. <laughs> Went right by 500, got woo, way the hell up there, you know? Because we were just inviting so many per day and you know, so many, after so many days, you know, you, you get there. It's going to take maybe a month to do that sometimes. Maybe between a half a month and a month to do that. All right. You need Sales Navigator. You need this tool. You gotta have it. Okay? It's 80 bucks a month, but let me assume that maybe you didn't buy off on that yet. I'm not sure. Laura, you're not sure yet, are you? No. Mitch is sure. He knows. Connie's sure. No, she's not. I gotta make the case for Connie. I gotta pick out one person in the audience to talk to. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Right? One person. So Connie's my one for this. Okay, here you go. 
All right. So there's a process to getting going. Okay, we're gonna get going, but we've got a little few steps to make first, a few things to get started. So we're at ground zero. This is where we start. You don't exist on LinkedIn until you have a profile. You are born. Born on date. I born on date January 14, 2004. I showed you on my old little thing, all right? You can see where it is. Born on date. All right. And and the reason that we have a profile is because people are gonna come look at us. Okay. The inbounders really do it. They do a really good job in their profile. And people come find them, keywords, and all this sort of cool stuff we're going to talk about here. All right. The outbounders, they got to have a good looking profile to back them up, not to attract people, but to back them up. I said I was good. Check out my profile. Says, I'm good. <laughs> says, so I told you. Take a look. Take a look. Good luck going to the Facebook profile and seeing, look how good I am. Look at my photos and my timeline. That's what. That's what it's about, right? Here's my pictures, and here's what I've been saying. It's not about what I am. And LinkedIn's more about what you are. So the first step in our profile process is to fit in by having the right words that describe us. I'm going to blow through something that this is really a whole topic all to itself. This is what Laura specializes in over here on my team, Laura Brandt. She's our profile writer, so she knows all about this. Let's get the variations of those words, too, the apostrophe S's and the comma, posse S's, you know, whatever version there is of it. Let's get that going. But we want to be the one that stands out because we're one of 25 people on a page. Why are they going to click on us? Why? Because we got a red tie. We look better in it. We got the keywords. We look good. We stand out. We fit in. And we stand out. I know Keenan pretty well out of Denver. Uh, we wrote uh, Jeffrey Gittimer's profile about 10 years ago. It's been rewritten and rewritten and rewritten because he can afford people better than us. Better than us. But that's fit in and stand out. Do you think you see that in action there? That combination? All right. So the next part about getting ready is a company page. You have a presence on LinkedIn company does too. Okay. So your company has presence on, on LinkedIn in the form of like a website and your employees show up on it. There's like a roster of employees on it. It's free and here's how to get it. Work. Scroll, scroll, scroll. You'd never see that. You wouldn't see this. You'd open that page. You go, I don't see it because it's down, down, to down. Okay. So that was all prep. Didn't I say prep? Prep. It's like preseason football, right? Doesn't matter other than you can make a mistake, get in trouble. You can put your foot in your mouth a few times here. I'm going to make sure that you don't, all right? So there's three steps. One, two, three. Three stages we're going to go through. The first one is really easy. Sometimes it's really quick. We're going to contact our existing LinkedIn connections and shake the tree. Hey, what you doing? Rangi, I haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? Can't say that for Kevin because we talk too often. Okay. Less, we talk too often. But shaking the tree, as we say. And I'm going to point out one little thing here. Okay. Notice at the very bottom, underneath my name. Do you see that? Boy, that looks like a good place to click, to call to action, doesn't it? Really simple. You know what you're going to do, right? Okay. That actually goes to Calendly over there. Okay. That's the lowest hanging fruit. We're already connected. Okay. The next low hanging fruit are people we already know. They got their business card, got them on a list, they attended an event. In my outlook, we already know these folks. So we've got to find them. We've got to put their name in. Tim's not hard. Kevin Grass, a little less hard. A little less hard. Rungich spelled funky. <laughs> Easy. Don't, just don't misspell your own name, right? I don't think you're going to have that trouble. But other people might. You know, other people might. I have common misspellings of my name. People spell O'Neill with two L's. E-A-L. No apostrophe. 
And in my profile, I have the other spellings of my name there. With here's some other spellings in there. So in case they search a certain way and they find me with O N E A L and put in LinkedIn Trainer, they're going to find me and stuff. Not the other ones. So it's something to think about. Okay. You don't. Ne these folks already know you, so you don't necessarily have to do this. Put in a put in a custom message. But you might. These are folks you already know who they are. Okay, they're already friends of yours. When you invite them on LinkedIn, maybe you just say, maybe we just say connect and go. Or we say connect, paste in a message, haven't seen you in a while, something specific. Okay. But these are folks who already know us. That's the key part. Okay, low hanging fruit here. That's easy. Because eventually, we got to deal with strangers. Strangers right here. Eventually. This is my holiday version. Okay. This, ain't, this is not here for the long term. Maybe it will, if you like it enough. Eventually, we have to deal with people who don't have any idea who we are. They know it's kind of like, hi, my name is Mike. My name is Jack. Okay? We got to deal with that. So the way we're going to do that is through something called campaigns on LinkedIn. We're going to pick out the colors that we want. We're going to pick out the people that we want. We're going to pick out just, just the, however we define it. We're going to take our definition. Well, I'm going to get ahead. Okay. We're going to use our time system methodology here. This is a formula called the time system. It will help you remember this. It's easy. Time. Time. It's easy. And it's going to be even easier today than it was four days ago when I did this presentation because I was itching to put in a few more extra slides. And they fixed me a week ago. No last minute, the corrections. So you get the better presentation than I gave away just a few days ago. Okay. This is one piece to focus in on. In the time system, we have two things that go into it and two things that come out of it. We're going to put targets in the form of people, messages in the form of text, and they're going to go together. We're going to get responses out of here. Some, of them, some folks are going to say they like it. Some folks are going to say they don't. Some folks are going to say, right? You know that one in LinkedIn? <coughs> Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. You know, that kind of stuff. All right. So we're going to dive into that. For the first part is, you know, if you're paying for LinkedIn, this helps you get your money's worth out of it. It's a nice steady stream of stuff, too. You can go faster or slower if you're on vacation or not. Okay. And at the end result here is we're getting data out of LinkedIn and into another system. So if employees leave, their data stays. You know what that's like, them. Right, my sales rep left and took all the data with them. Heard that one before? I live with that one all the time. That's the Rolodex days. Okay. We've got some ways we can do some things about that. All right. So let me define what happens in the most common sort of LinkedIn campaign. We're going to find some folks to invite, and we're going to go through this process of connecting and messaging and getting some responses from them. This is all using the LinkedIn inbox. This isn't the email inbox. This isn't the posting. Look at my post and like and share. The whole public can see it. One to one. My inbox dears. Got to be dealt with. No spam filter here. Okay. So there's a big difference in two classes of people. Big, big difference. You're in or you're out. You know, you're Jewish or you're not, or you're Irish or you're not, or you're connected or you're not. And there's a big thing that happens. Literally, just, I used to animate this slide. It was pretty cool. I took all my animations out. You see one step after another, and I had a time, so I would say something, and then they'd go, boom, we go out the door. Okay. And this is what happens when we go out the door. All of these things that were not possible are now possible. Sending messages on LinkedIn, as many as we want. Email address, sure. Phone number, almost all of them. Recommend or endorse or see their feed, any of that stuff. 
until you're connected, none of that happens. You're one of these folks out here, don't get any of that. So what we want to do essentially is move people up from the seats out there to the seats down here that are called first level kind of stuff. Now, more is better, but more of what you want is better, right? You can put a lot of ads out there and all these people come in from all over, but instead if we have our target list, just the folks we want and we get more, that's what we're talking about, okay? So that's where I'm gonna take us. Input number one, targeting. This is people. So we gotta know what our audience looks like, you know? And this is what we do as consultants is we figure out what a client audience looks like. We map it back into LinkedIn. Cast a big net. LinkedIn's a big net. You can't, you can't filter out a lot of stuff. You can put a lot of people on the list. You just can't weed it out much. Okay. But we could add some more criteria over here with Sales Navigator on this one. But let's take a look, okay? Let's take a look. CEOs, owners, CFOs, high-level people. It's hardware, software, technology. Greater Denver area. Pretty good search. Okay. So let's take a look. What's that? That's Navigator. This is LinkedIn.com. No, but You're going to see Sales Navigator in just a moment. The next slide coming up is a little beefier. <laughs> it's a little more muscle there. Have you seen the commercial? Yeah. Who's, who's not seen the commercial? Enough people. All right. So they go back and forth for about 30 seconds, talking to this guy, then this guy, then this guy, then this guy, and they both start out like this. But after 30 seconds, one guy looks like this because he's got more. He's got Geico, he gets more. Okay. He ends up, one of them's called Potato Chip. He nicknames the other guy Potato Chip. Yeah, it's really funny. I used to run the actual video on it, but the technical things in doing that were too hard for me. Um, too loud on the microphone or something like whatever. So this is what happens. This is that same sort of search with a little extra juice on it with Sales Navigator, particularly right here. Okay. I'm going to dive through these one at a time. I'm going to explain to them one at a time here. Can I ask a quick question on this? Especially with your titles down here, you got CEO, President, Director, whatever. There's a million solopreneurs out there that put in their titles, President, CEO, CFO. That's right. They're not, they're just... That's right. For they shall be in the 1 to 10 category here that we have excluded. How did you exclude them? By not checking the category that says 1 to 10 employees. Oh, thank you. Or the one that says 11 to 50. We're really kind of cut it off. Our base here is at 50. But you only have that option in Navigator, right? You only have that option in Navigator. Oh, okay. So when you hear 1 to 10, what does that really mean? Me. So one. Yeah. <laughs> when you hear 11 to 50, what does that mean? You keep going, right? You know, it's a marketing person that checks the box one higher than theirs that determines what the number is here. Okay. Okay, and it's never updated over time. Your company could grow 400%. No one ever looks here. You could go out of business and still says, we got 50 employees here. Okay. No one ever goes back and checks that one-time checkbox when okay. they set that up. The parameter here is set up on a LinkedIn company page of the company. It's kind of tricky, but it's not part of your profile here. It's part of the company page that you're part of. All right. So we're going to find new people. Remember? Strangers, all right, we're hunting, okay. So what we're gonna hunt for first is, is a certain series of criteria that we're going to use. There's a whole bunch of 29 filters, I promised you, 29 filters, we're not going to use them all. This one seems kind of familiar, doesn't it? What do they call that? What's that called? Starts with the letter B. Boolean. Boolean. Or something. Boolean. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know where that comes from? Golden. No, but that's as good of a guess as there is. If you saw how it's spelled, you would know differently, but it sounds good. Yeah. Anyone know? Come on. The computer science. Yeah. That, that's a very good guess as well. That's not no. particularly correct, but it's not, not, in, not, in, not, in, not, not wrong. It goes back to the 1850s. How about gravy? B-O-U-I-L-L-I? No. <laughs> Do you want to know? Do you want to know? I mean, this is the days of, well, Abraham Lincoln, right? 1850s? About like that? 
Mr. Bully, Bully or Bool, I never know, really tells me, is in the UK and he comes up with this one line way to do program coding. One line coding. There's and commands and not commands and brackets and all this sort of stuff out here. All right. We're just going to show this. But there's a shortcut with Sales Navigator. It's called the priority level here. The senior level priority. Okay. So you notice these titles are kind of picked for you. You can kind of pick them from a list if you don't want to code it. We want to code it. You want to code it. But there's a short way. And does anyone know what a CXO is? I always get questions about a CXO. Experience. Chief Experience Officer. That's the best answer I've heard that's wrong. <laughs> Anyone? How about that? Yeah. yeah. So when you're getting that, you also get that. <laughs> LinkedIn is only looking for the words Chief and Officer, folks, so just be aware of that. When you take a shortcut here, you get un unwanted consequences. False positives, we say, all right? So the next thing that really matters in our targeting, remember we're targeting the time system, T-I-M-E, targeting, is where folks are. And with LinkedIn, this is what you get. Pretty good. I can get the United States, I can get cities, I can say Minneapolis and St. Paul, they're together. All right. I can go to Duluth. Minnesota doesn't have much more beyond that, quite frankly. <laughs> California's got a little more to work with, if you know what I mean. And you'll discover that in a moment. But if you've got Sales Navigator, we can now go, give me all of Minnesota. Okay. Give me just the North Bay in San Francisco. Give me something and draw a really big circle around it. This is also one of the really big things in Sales Navigator out here, one of the really big features. Okay. The stuff used to be in LinkedIn.com. Used to be there for free. It's gone. It's gone. This is the one that matters the most, didn't I say? Small, medium, large. If you're calling on small companies, we make, do we do websites for small companies? Well, here you go. All right? You wouldn't do this. You wouldn't do that. Okay? Nobody does all three. Two or three. What's that one? You want it fast, cheap, and good? You know, two, pick two out of three. Well, out of this, generally I tell people to pick three. Pick the one that you want, one higher, one lower, or move it along. But pick three, sometimes more. But don't pick one or two. Pick a few. This is one I love a lot. Right, Deb? Don't we love industries? The thing about industries, it's so big, is that everyone has one and only one. So if you want to slice the bread and not lose anybody, industries is how you can do it. You won't lose anyone. We'll pick all 147 one at a time and no one's left on the floor. In our campaign process, we need that. We can't have scrap. Okay. So there's a way to do it a little easier, and I've got a nice tool at the end for you to download and get this little guide where we can take the industries and group them together and say, I'll just do technology instead of all this. Give me technology for 20. You know, there's also manufacturing, telecom, or, or uh, technology, uh, transportation, some others. It'll be a tool at the end, I'll show you. So the next thing, this is a really big thing. And Jess, you might, might, you probably know this, but this is, this is really down there, okay? If in LinkedIn you don't have a keyword as part of your search in LinkedIn, you shall not see third level connections. Almost nobody knows this. You'll get ones and twos if you don't have a keyword. Okay. So something to think about, that keyword could be the job title you're searching on. So if you're searching on CEOs and stuff, well, put it right up here. Okay. Get your third level connections 400 times as many results. 400 times as many results when you add the third level connections in. So do you want to get 500 or do you want to get 125? Add a keyword up here if you do this right. Okay. Okay. Next, keeping track of people on LinkedIn. Different, I'm, I'm cover, covering Sales Navigator in a moment, but keeping track of people on LinkedIn is not easy for there is no way to create a list. What we have to do is kind of keep a little cheat sheet, maybe a little Google sheet that keeps our important people, important anything. You'll see a tool at the end here that I'm going to talk about here. But that's a good thing to keep track of important people, important messages, important people. All right. Sales Navigator, on the other hand, has such a feature built in. Isn't that lovely? Just show me the folks, the alternative board, the Vistage folks, the AAISP people, the CRM people. How about Colorado, Minnesota, California, and Texas people? 
Those are tags. There's people that all have those tags on their profile, and I can say, show them all to me now. It's my hot list. All right. <coughs> so what I described is what's called a lead-based approach to selling. The people that show up in my searches are people that work for all different companies, all different kinds of stuff, all grouped together. You know, me melting pot, as we say. There's another approach, okay? And this is what's used in a lot of big business. Account-based. So it's a little bit different. Very often in account-based, we start with a list. Here's my list. That list might be the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal book of lists. Ooh, there we go, there's the companies. Let's do that with them. Let's pretend that's what we're gonna do here, okay? And our account-based part where we've got our, where we've got our Denver, our, our Minneapolis, I always say Denver, Minneapolis Business Journal, let's just find this list. So we're gonna find the companies first. We're gonna look at, we're gonna save those companies as accounts in Sales Navigator, okay? Then we're gonna have the employees there that we like that, we, that can help us, we're gonna save them as leads. And then we're gonna do the process we're gonna talk about, okay? That's just the target and the engagement process is pretty much the same. Okay. The include part is where we're gonna scrubby dub dub. All right, we're gonna take our search, we're gonna flip it around and turn it into a different kind of a list that we can scrub, okay? You might scrub people that don't have a picture it might scrub people that, you know, you, this is one method we use to scrub men or women from a list. I only work with men, or my message is the men's message, and guess what, I'll scrub it again, have the women's message, and have a different message, he or she. This is how you can split things up, okay? It's, it, it's not real sexy, I had a really sexy picture in here I took out uh, of Mr. Clean scrubbing, you know, and it's gonna go back in, I just, didn't have it in here, but it's, this is the shock moment where you need to shock them after so many slides, right? It's not sexy. It's just unchecking a box. Okay, scrubbing is not sexy, but isn't Mr. Clean sexy? <laughs> what we get in the end result is a bona fide list, all right? The only folks we got on our team are folks we want, okay? That's the target, the included targets, all right? The next input into our time system after the targets is the messages. This is what we're going to send to them, what we're gonna dangle in front of them, all right, in this process, okay? And it's a bit just like this. These targets get this and other targets get this. We can have multiple things going on at the same time, the medical campaign and the dental campaign. Maybe they'd be in one. How about the medical and the farming campaign? They're not likely to be in the same one. All right. So we need ammunition. We need this. This is the input. We need some messages to send to those people, to those particular targets. What do they want to hear? What's hot? What's trending? This is not my area of expertise. I sub this out to Carrie Switala. Okay. I have someone who's really good at this, all right, that I bring in place. Like I sub uh, profiles out to Laura over here, because they do it better than I. I know good stuff when I see it. I still executive produce. I see all the messages still, even that she does. Okay. T-I-M, time, T-I-M-E, engaging. The last part, this is where it gets fun. This is kind of what I told you we needed, right? We need these messages here to feed into our time system. We need these messages that go out, right? This is most commonly what happens. Plenty of other things that could go on here, but I'm not here for the half a day. Still taking a picture of someone? I'll wait. That's a good one. So, what, what would I expect? I get that from clients all the time. Well, what do I expect? Okay. This was not in the presentation four days ago. All right, so this is what we can expect. 20% of the people that we're going to invite from our fancy schmancy targeting with our fancy schmancy messages are going to say, yeah, okay? 80%, 75% are not. And it's not that they don't like you, that they're just not on LinkedIn often enough. They're not going to see it. And we're going to give them only so many days, 30 days, 45 days to accept that invite 
or on to the next one. Our systems clean up after themselves. Our ratios of sending to receiving need to stay right here. And if we go too fast, they get out of whack and LinkedIn says, guess what you're doing? No more sending for you, okay? At least for a day or two, all right? So we had two inputs and two outputs to the time system. Who's, what's the first input? Time system, what's the first input? T, targets. Targets, and you're going to need keep getting new ones and more and more and more and more. You're going to run to the end of the list and say, where do I find some more? Let's go to another state. Let's go to another industry. Let's split it up. Okay. So what's the other input? Targets and messages. messages. Two things coming in. The other out, the big output here is responses, and responses can come in three categories. Hot, warm, and cold, or you know, hot or not, and somewhere in the middle. Okay. Now, this is still a lead. Why is this still a lead right here, especially you in the time system? No. Huh? He didn't say no. He didn't say no. In fact, he said, huh, I'd like to know more. Isn't that he's saying that? I'd like to know more, right? Because the guy who doesn't want to know more says no. either nothing or heck no. Right? Heck no. Okay. And there's a certain process to take for each of these. The heck no guy's got to be taken out of the searches and got to be unsubscribed and all kinds of stuff we got to do with this guy. We got to research these folks here and find out more about them. The reason he's a lead is I only put leads in the database. I scrub the list. Everyone I put in there is bona fide. I don't have to worry so much here. Now it's just a matter of what I'm going to do with them. So we get these responses. What are we going to do? And talk about that. First thing is we're going to not put our foot in our mouth. Do a little research. Let's take a look at their LinkedIn profile and see what we might say to them, particularly the about section. Let's see what they've been liking and commenting about. This is, this is where the Instagram world comes in, all right? The current stuff. This is the only spot where it really matters what's going on today. Don't get too excited. Many of the folks, most of the folks, I won't say all, but most of the folks will not have said anything at all, <laughs> okay? For they are not in marketing, okay? They are not in a sales role. Here's a little trick about how many connections somebody has. You wanna know it? Jess sees it here, right? Where's that trick, Jess? It says how many articles and activities you have and how many followers are gonna be. Right there. They're not just 500 plus. 3,500 connections, see? You gotta know where to look, it's right there. If they've never posted anything, you won't see that at all. The other thing to look at is see, is it just them? Or is there somebody maybe even better? I'll go to the company page now from their profile and see, this guy's good, but guess what? Woo, hey, these guys are better. I found the, the, the director of sales, but here's the vice president of sales. Here's the chief marketing officer. I could add them to, not instead of, let's add them to it. That's that account-based marketing principle. We're going to find the company first and see who else is there. And the account doing this here, we can add other people to it. How many times into the company do we want? I go three, four, five times into a company that's decent size. With that many employees, I would. Okay. So we talked about the kinds of responses. Hot, warm, or cold. How? I'm a how guy. We do workshops with people who have laptops and stuff. Well, there's a lot of hows. There's a lot of ways. Let's go through them. You're not going to do them all, and you're going to do more than one. Okay, so somewhere between two and all is where this is going to be. First of all, the most simple and basic thing is let's just respond to their response. R-E-P-L-Y. Okay, this is the thing that you generally want to do. They, they sent you a note on LinkedIn, and guess what? I responded on LinkedIn, because that's where they were. Okay. That's not the only thing. And in fact, one of the big features of connecting, remember, we get their email address. Here's Carrie's email address, anybody? Okay. Okay. We get that. That's part of what we get when we connect. That's part of why we turn twos and threes into ones, so we get that. 
we have this ability to create a list called a lead list on Sales Navigator. I'm not going to dive, there's five or six really good reasons to do that. I'm not going to dive into it here. But it's only part of SNAV. SNAV, that's pretty cool. Hashtag SNAV. I do that too. Not enough keystrokes, not enough time to do the whole thing. All right. Here is a really, really good one. This should have a star, and it will have a star in the next iteration. When you get sent a message on LinkedIn and you're looking at that message, there's a URL associated with that message. There's a www dot associated with that message. And pretty soon that message is pushed down by another one and by another one, and pretty soon you can't see it anymore. It's so far away. But through your browser here, you can bookmark important messages. You can bookmark anything with the URL, quite frankly. And I'm going to show you an app at the end here that we're working to develop that does some of this bookmarking stuff. Thank you, Connie. All right. A lot of folks got CRM systems. Who's got a CRM system here or something that kind of qualifies? Got Excel? <laughs> we all got a CRM system, right? We all got one. Okay. CRM system are the ultimate benefactory, benefactor of these LinkedIn campaigns. They're fuel, they're logs in the fire. All right. And not just putting something in the CRM, but adding a reminder that it's there. <laughs> okay. Remember that? Okay. If you've used a CRM system, you know what I mean. Stuff goes in and never comes out. All right. All right. So these automation and systemization tools that I use in this process that you're going to be learning more about, you're going to learn a lot about them in a moment, have special inbox options as well. Let's color code hot, hot, warm, cold. The tools that automate and systemize this process have a beautiful looking inbox to go with. Some of them do, some less so, more so, less so. I put a lot on the table, didn't I? You got to do this, I got to do this, I got to remember to do that, I got to remember to do that. You know, you don't have to do it all at once and you don't have to do it all yourself. Okay. We're at least, we're systemizing here. We've got ways to do things. But you're the default, right? So everything comes, at the, at the end you go home and you go like, well, someone's going to do this, but it's not going to be me, but it starts out here. That's where it starts. You know, but there's help because we have Connie who just left, who does this stuff, or other people who does this stuff. And if someone is already helping you, that's the best place to look at for help. They're doing your email. They're, they're you got your Filipinos doing your stuff. You know, if you've already got a helper, this stuff goes well with that, as opposed to bringing a new actor in or a new vendor in even. If your vendor can work with the folks you already have, it's even better because you can adopt more over time. You know, I'll start up, you know, with more done for me, but then I'll take a little more in, a little more in. We do this stuff, okay? The team here that you saw, okay? So now we've decided that, you know, maybe I'll do it, maybe it'd be someone else, maybe it'd be a combination, who knows who, but how? We got a little bit of wiring together stuff, right? It's all that stuff, you know. Behind the scenes, this actually happens, although it looks a little more elegant nowadays, right? A little more elegant. It's like, I had, a, I had an office in a data center. It looked like this. 68 degrees, wore sweaters in the summer. Perf tile below me. I could feel. Have you ever been in a data center? Felt that cool air coming up through the tiles down below you. All right. Um, it is sort of this way. There's man and machine and process that go through all sorts of things to in the end out here, hopefully bring us some money. That's why we do it in the end. That's how we keep track of score. All right. So this is what you do now. Does this, is this not how it, how it looks now? Look at that picture. It's kind of, it's kind of a, like a Christmas tree without much on it, right? We log in to LinkedIn, through the internet, my computer, one-on-one. -on -one. You're actually logged into a server on LinkedIn, by the way. You're not logged into LinkedIn itself. You're logged into a computer, and, and you're all on a computer. You're logged into one, and 10,000 of us might be on one computer, and 10,000 on another one, another one. Okay. So in the, if you've got a CRM system, you've been doing a little bit more. 
Control C, Control V is your friend, right? We didn't always have copy and paste. Did anyone know about those days? Floppy disks, no copy paste. Okay, type it in. You know, O'Neill has one L. Okay, one L. Um, but now, when I talked about systemizing things. Didn't I say I was going to make it easier? The time system saves you time. Because we provision a computer that's out in the cloud. These services have this. You don't have to get your own computer. It's in a data center. They set it up. It's 60 seconds. Boom. It's logged in as you on LinkedIn, ready to go do all this stuff. We put in the targets, we put in the messages, we put it into the system, it gives us responses. Let's just do this stuff that essentially gets us to the next, the next level. These are the things that we can systemize. The sending of invites doesn't add much value. Dear John, dear Fred, dear Sally, dear Jackie. That's the one that makes the most sense to systemize because there's not much that goes there. After people connect these post connection messages, you know, there's good reason to maybe not, not systemize that. If you want to go slower and easier, it's like, I see you're in the event business. I see you're in the car business. I see you're in the printing business. Systems can't do that. That's you that says, you know, are you in bucket A, B, or C? Okay. But sales is a numbers game. And I'd rather deal with responses rather than trying to get them myself. Show me the people who shake out of the tree. And next month, let's send them something else and get some more responses. Let's send some more. Let's send some more. Shake the tree and deal with responders instead of the process. If you're going to get data out, though, you've got to use a tool. The rest of this can be done manually. And it often is with your Filipino, you know, who can take all that little extra stuff to do this stuff. This works really great manually, but it works really great and slow manually, okay? And if you're anxious to make your quota this quarter, this month, as opposed to this year or at this job, it's a different thing. You might never get to the end of the tunnel out there because guess what? I had to make my quota for four months and I'm still waiting because I'm not using a tool. All right, so output number two. First one, the first output was, starts with an R. Responses, responses, leads we'll call them, okay? Not all of them are leads, right? The one the guy says, I'm not interested, okay? Those are responses though. The second output, I gotta let you talk about though. Gotta talk about it a little bit. Um, LinkedIn has a lot of data, do you agree? How many Patatera, Kara, Weta, Bonka, Bomp bytes are there of data that LinkedIn has, right? It's like, I don't even know the numbers anymore. What's a, what's a thousand petabytes? Telecom guy, come on. I know. Yeah. <laughs> we, didn't even, we didn't even talk about petabytes when I was in the business. Um, uh, so, so LinkedIn's got a lot of data and people would like to get that data into other systems and, and LinkedIn kind of took exception to that except the courts don't agree. September 10th, 2019. How current is that? Do you get it? So this pulling data down from LinkedIn, the courts say it's okay, but LinkedIn can give you some hassle for that in the meantime, right? So you want to kind of stay underneath the radar screen a little bit. They don't help much. Err, LinkedIn data! Here I am on this island over here wondering how do I get from point A to point B? You know, it, it, isn't, it isn't obvious. Okay. And if you've got a CRM, you know what I mean. Is this not? The world. It's like that first what, what slide I did at the very beginning. It says, oh, I don't know what to do. I, I don't, you know, everyone kind of wouldn't. But boy, I'd sure love to have it. Love to have it. It's like muscles, right? I want to have that body, that beach body. How much, how much for that? How much that beach body cost? You know, give it to me, right? You, you can't do it. You got to do it kind of on your own. You can, you can help a little bit. But with these systems that we're talking about, it's a little easier. We can pull the data down in one shot if we want. We can have it go one record at a time in a feed and go right on in one at a time every 15 minutes updating stuff. It's fast, fast. This is the stuff we're usually talking about. Basic stuff, name, address, city, state, zip to, to, to CRM people. But without an email address, we don't put stuff, stuff doesn't get into our CRM system without an email address typically. It's a required field in many of them. Key field, required field. We get that here. 
And if you go to download your LinkedIn connection data now, has anyone downloaded their LinkedIn connection data? What's the problem with that? No email address. No email address, he says. If you've got an old download. I was going to say, old download, I had email. That's right. So you'll be glad for that 2018 download you did. Exactly. For it has the data that you seek in 2019, 2020. All right. So let me share what's, where this is going, okay? This is my favorite part, okay? How was that? You learned some stuff? Who's going to go, go do Sales Navigator for a free trial for 30 days? Anybody? You get a free trial, okay? okay. Uh, we did it with Deb. <clears throat> we took an automation tool. We got a free trial. Deb went from how many connections to 2,000? Okay, just using this 30-day trial. We even had the tool on trial for a while. Had ended up having to pay for the tool. Well, this is where things are headed, okay? Artificial intelligence is gonna come down from the sky and it's gonna really help us here. It really is, it's gonna let us create mini-me's that do things as if, you know, we were doing that. You know, if you could only just go build that beach body for me, <laughs> okay? Well, I'm over here doing other stuff, All right? This is what the world feels like, and it's getting more, more and more. You know, three quarters of these we don't use, but God, I use that one, I use Twitter, I use that one, I use YouTube. You know, go all around here, I use, I use, and there's gonna be more. There's gonna be more, not less. Less. Thank you. Right. So, that. <laughs> so, less is tagline, is less is more, okay? So I, I, I could have done that for you. Then someone, someone, someone would have called me out and I'd go, ah, over there, over there, okay. There is this trend towards simplicity, isn't there? I mean, your iPhone used to have one button, now it has none, is that more simple or not? Maybe, I don't know. We just, Deb just got a new iPhone and it used to have a button. I, mine didn't and hers did and I couldn't know how to use that old phone anymore, you know? But simple, you know, five guys, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is a modern day, I think it's a 737, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, you know, a Max. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's one that's not flying. But doesn't that look pretty complicated? But really, it's less so, isn't it? I mean, I, I went and got a, a picture of a 707 the other night to put into here as a, as, and I, I took it out just to be more, more brief and stuff, but you should see what that looks like. Now, which one do you want to do? The one that has the flashing lights on or the one that has the little dials that spin around? All right, so this is where it's headed. Along that principle, our networks are gonna be integrated together. No Facebook network, LinkedIn network. We're gonna have our network and here's Facebook, and here's LinkedIn, and here's Twitter, and here's Instagram, and here's email, and other stuff that we already use in one spot. Our feed of some, oh, I posted it on Instagram. Well, I didn't see that, because I'm looking on Facebook. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna see them all in one spot. And post to them all from one spot, perhaps. Okay. Our inbox, gee, I, se I sent you a message. Oh. Where? <laughs> Did you get my message? Did you? Really? And the message was really a reply to a comment. Not even, it's like, really, really? You're not going to go that far down? Really? Right. But this is what's going to happen. It's not going to matter what device you have, but it really is going to be phone based. Okay, we all know that, right? We all know at least, at least the good stuff. All right. So I've got this data manager. It's an application we're developing for this. I'm working with it right now, working with investors, to try to get this app built for us. Here's help for you. There is. Got free stuff. Just write this one down. You'll see it. It's right on your diagram there. It's right in the lower right, right corner of your diagram. Okay. That's your spot for stuff. All right. All the things we talked about, including a white, nice white paper on the campaigns. Okay. We, we coach and, tra and train on this stuff individually, teams, that kind of stuff. And some folks really like to have it be part of the process. We do it together. Other folks really don't want anything to do with it. I like this better. I like working with assistants. We do it together. We move the, move the knowledge from our, our side to yours. Um, Matthew Todd's one of our favorites. Heard of an EOS implementer, anybody? 
or to those folks. So that's one of our big, big groups. So that's it. If you need to take a picture of something to follow up, this is sort of it. That's the last of today's presentation.